in this video, I'm going to talk briefly about muscular soreness and whether or not it's an indicator of um, muscular development. So it's a question I get asked all the time. Do I need to have that kind of intense burning pain during a set to build muscle? Or do I need to be in pain you know, one to two days after a training session to build muscle or strength? Um, neither of which are indicators of muscular development, um, simply put. So we'll go into DOMS first. DOMS, or the delayed onset of muscle soreness, is a pain typically uh, experienced a day or two after training. It can last for several days after a training session. Uh, it used to be thought that the um, uh, lactic would kind of hang around in the muscles which would produce this pain after a training session. It's not the case, though. It's more really the uh, muscle soreness is actually a function of the inflammation of the connective tissue in the skeletal muscle. So basically the muscle becomes damaged and torn after a training session, um, which causes swelling or inflammation in the muscle tissue. This puts pressure on the muscle fibers, which stimulates pain through nerve receptors. Studies have now shown that muscular damage um, is not an indicator of hypertrophy or strength. Um, so this particular study here, titled Muscle Damage and Muscle Remodeling, no pain, no gain, question mark. Um, Basically, the results of this particular study suggest that muscle rebuilding, for example, hypertrophy, can be initiated independent of any discernible damage to the muscle. So let's talk now about the pain you would typically experience during an actual set. This can become quite intense at times, especially if you're prolonging the set for more than a minute or two by doing high amounts of repetitions. So to summarize as briefly as possible, ATP is the end result of energy production. It's what the cells would directly use as energy. We utilize a number of various different pathways to get to that end product. And a lot of it is dependent on how much oxygen we have available at that time. So essentially when you're training with a high intensity, when you're exercising um, you know, uh, with enough intensity, the cell cannot keep up the production of ATP to meet its energy demands because there is not enough oxygen available. This leads to an increased glucose breakdown into a product called pyruvate. This can be used in the Krebs cycle when there is enough oxygen available, but when there isn't, uh, the pyruvate is converted to lactate, which is then further used to delay muscle fatigue. It's a common misconception that lactate causes that burn in muscles, muscles that you get during a set or an exercise. It's actually the hydrogen ions that are produced as a byproduct of that or in a different process altogether alongside the uh, conversion of pyruvate to lactate that causes this pain and the increased acidity in the muscle cells. And the lactate actually helps to diffuse that and therefore lower the pH and allow us to continue exercising at a higher intensity for longer. So essentially lactate is actually good. Um, without that, the muscles would fatigue even faster and you'd be able to do less reps at a particular weight um, without that lactate being produced. This process is simply a byproduct of training with a high intensity um, where we don't have enough oxygen to meet the demands needed to produce ATP. Moreover, if pain was a key indicator of muscular development or potential development over a set, then by increasing that pain, we should yield greater improvements in muscular strength and or size. So if I were to perform 500 to 1,000 reps at one kilo uh, dumbbell curls, for example, no doubt I'd be in absolute agony and you know the pain would be far more severe than any set that I could do at um, you know, eight to 12 reps at a greater load. So by this theory, it would mean that set at the higher rep ranges would be more efficient at building muscle mass than the uh, traditional set. But it's simply not the case. The reason for that is because the weight that I would need to use to accumulate that number of reps would be so low, it simply wouldn't provide enough stimulus to build bigger or stronger muscles. The weight has to be above a certain percentage for it to be an effective set at building muscle and or strength. You know, let's say over 65%. Any set that you're gonna be doing, utilizing a weight underneath that, and really you're gonna be training other energy pathways and or developing other um, you know, areas of fitness, i.e. stamina and or endurance. So if you look at weightlifters and powerlifters as well, it's another great example that showcases 
Um, pain accumulated during a set really isn't a good indicator of potential muscular development. Typically, the bulk of their work is low reps. They're generally stopping sets before, before their form breaks down. They're not really going to experience a lot of that searing burn and pain that, that typically a bodybuilder would. However, they're able to generate enough stimulus to grow larger and stronger muscles over time. If you look at Olympic weightlifters' fires, for example, they're incredibly muscular um, and typically their sets would only be one, two, maybe three reps. From my own work as well, I often found the best results came from periods of training where I was doing quite low reps with high volume and high frequency, really stopping the set prior to any kind of muscle burn set in. Um, so I would say in general, it's more important to focus on progressive overload over time and trying to maximize the amount of volume that you accumulate um, over a certain percentage of your warrant max, i.e. 65-70%. Um, that's more important and more effective at indicating potential muscular development than the pain experienced during a set or after uh, any given workout that you do. Um, so that pretty much wraps it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to see more. Um, don't forget, I do offer online coaching for anyone interested, specifically for natural bodybuilders. Email me at naturalaesthetic at outlook.com for more info. Stay strong.